videos I want to show you a quick intro here to some of the new features of um, what you might call it the exposure sheet that's um, something that you may have seen before uh, it's accessible here in the animation menu and um, there is some new stuff here and in particular the, a new mouse set and that would be the sketch 2. So uh, before we dive into that I just want to run through a couple of very basic uses of the exposure sheet. What's it good for? You know, it's basically something that you use if you are an animator, a traditional cartoonist animator and you want to draw frame by frame your talking persons, your characters that are speaking to a particular audio. And if you don't have that audio yet, um, I mean if you do, it would be an, a WAV file that you can import. But if you don't have it, we have a little audio recorder here that uh, helps in that. And you can certainly use other audio recording tools as well. Um, in this one here, I'll simply say something really silly. Something maybe that Santa Claus might say. You have been bad. Stop that. And you notice, by the way, there's a couple of uh, choices. You could have uh, changed the sample rate and other settings for the audio. <clears throat> but let's see um, what we got here. I'm going to save that and um, it will be like capture one or whatever you want to call that. And I'll keep that in my documents library right there. Oh, I do have another one. Let's override this one. Now we can play it. Or we can um, look at you know, what, what settings we had there and some other parameters. You can jump into the Windows audio properties. Um, at this point, we got an audio file. We can go and work. So I'm going to load that WAV file right there. And let's sort that by date modified and see if we can find it. Uh, should be under my documents library here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Capture one and open that. So that's a WAV file. And you can now go and play it. So, so here we can first of all you can scrub through it directly as well, <laughs> or you can go and play it. You have been bad. And the idea now is, you know, as a traditional animator, what you'd like to do is draw every frame, uh, or at least some of them, have a visual reference. Um, of what the lips of the mouth shapes look like and so you might for instance say that over here when I say you you have been bad so it's e you so e we need the lips kind of tight and then you a little bit puckered into a u shape so that's what you do is you you look for the phonemes over here on the left side and you can see what it would look like if you have a e and then if it goes into a u click on that and you see the shapes uh, change and there are uh, either some uh, there's a whole mouse set to choose from that's kind of a cartoony style from a little bit more from the side and this one here so these two we've had for quite a while and we now have a new one courtesy of Nick Boone who is a very talented uh, young animator and artist who um, we will learn about a little bit more in the dog waffle of the moment I hope um, and uh, I just wanted to show you some of the stuff he's done he's basically basically drawn a whole set of mouth shapes to be added to this collection here. And so let's say for instance I want the E and that would be right there. And then here we go into the U, so that would be down here. Have, that would be, I don't know if you have an H, but an A, probably A. And you know, what I didn't do here is actually double click them. What you need to do is double click them so they actually take place into that entire sequence. But what you do here, you essentially go along each frame of that uh, wave uh, sequence and when you select which particular phoneme you want for the shapes of the lips, like this, you double click it and it will go into the phoneme that you're currently looking at. Which one is that? That's about, oh god, let's make it a little bit bigger here, 23, 24 ish. So let's go look for that. There you go. So you see a couple actually did take them uh, as I was going through them. So uh, here's the. Maybe we need a B here somewhere. You have the. the oh, we have a V down there somewhere. I'm hoping. The, yep. And let's see what we can do to add a few more to that. But, but that would be a B. And that's at about 46, so we need to 
go down a little bit further. There you go. So here's the 46. Let's get the v, uh, big B for bad. There you go. You see the lips are tight on that one. But, but. And then A uh, would be a bad. Uh, or maybe an O almost. A bit. There you go. That might be good. Okay. D. And then a D. Bad. D. And then we need a D here. Okay, so now we have basically a sequence of uh, lip shapes that mimic this particular sequence of the audio. When you play that, you can see the lips change accordingly. You have been bad. And basically that's uh, a visual tool for the traditional animator um, that I understand will be very useful when you want to a quick idea of what the, the shapes uh, of your lips might uh, need to look at like when you are going to draw them. But it's not going to place them into your uh, frames automatically. You're the one, you're the artist that's actually going to draw them at that point. Now there's a couple of other tools here for um, for a little bit more sophisticated um, work with that particular sequence and uh, I would highly uh, encourage you to um, e evaluate that and uh, explore it. Um, you know, work on the timing um, see which one of these mouse sets uh, fits you best and uh, you know perhaps even make your own collection and uh, we might uh, integrate them into a future build here. There's also the the camera uh, additional features, the sequence frames with the frame painter, that's a separate item. We have some tutorials on that as well on the website um, and uh, if you're doing traditional animation uh, this will definitely be something very, I uh, hopefully be something really useful for you as well. All right, thanks for watching and uh, watch, uh, look, look for a few more tutorials and videos. Uh, in fact, there is a video that uh, Nick Boone, who created this mouse set, um, records uh, the last of all of these um, uh, exposure sheet elements and explains how he does that. So uh, be sure to watch that as well. Now let's go record another one. This time, um, let's do something in Spanish and let's greet Don Felipe. And so what we will say is something like, uh, Hola, Don Felipe. Let's go record the audio and get ready to go. Uh, let's check the sample rate. Yep, 44,100. That's good. Let's go and record at that. Hola, Don Felipe. Stop that and save that and we call that Hola Don Felipe already had one I'll just override it now and let's see what I'd like so so after we've recorded it before we start either tossing it or using it we want to play it back Hola Don Felipe okay that sounds good so what we'll do is we'll go load that one now we'll open that wave file and <coughs> we'll scrub to find this one here Hola Don Felipe and we now have, I don't know if we can remove some of that empty space. That would be something for the audio. Maybe this one actually does that. Clear velocity, no, that would clear the whole velocity track. Uh, I guess there's some yellow and some other curves that we can add there. Draw on velocity track. Not exactly my expertise, so I'll let you explore that and maybe we'll have another tutorial to show that as well. Definitely a, a good audio editor is something that you may want to add to your tools, something like um, Audacity, a free editing tool for audio, would be perfect so you can trim away the empty space that you have here and the, the, the empties at the end here as well. Um, so I'm going to work on that now and see what we can do for the Hola Don Felipe. So initially, Hola Don Felipe. So we need to be around here. Oh, that would be an O. Let's go find double click O. And then O, L, 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 there's an L here. Double click L, A, A, that would be an A, a little bit A, not an A, more an A, what could be a, maybe an O would be, yeah, that would be a little bit wider. We need an R, we need an open R, I don't know if you have that here, certainly somewhere hidden I bet, <coughs> maybe we can uh, extend that um, and add additional content to this, uh, at any rate we'll probably do, do fine with this one here, and <coughs> uh, do, do, there's a D here somewhere, Don Felipe. D. Then we have an O again. Don. Oh, here's an F. There's an 
A, and then there's an L right here, and then E. Now this one, I don't know if it's the I or an E, E, like that. E, and then we have a P here. Yep, those lips tied for the P as in Peter, and then Felipe, and that would be like this. And it goes prolonged really long. And then in the end, we go kind of uh, well, empty. Um, and let's see what that looks like. Hola, Don Felipe. Uh, it's a bit jittery because much of it is kind of static and then suddenly there's a lot of very quick changes. So, you know, this is again where it's not going to do the animation for you. It's going to create a... a an, it's going to expose to you what the lips look like so that you can go and draw that.